All right, so for this part we have a 16 millimeter on top, 18 millimeter nut on the bottom. We're undoing these engine mounts. Got a breaker bar, don't know if I need it. Don't know how tight these are, but we're gonna find out. Hit them with a little PB blaster, never hurts. bad at all. Here's my organization tray, just so you see my system. If you want to do something similar, just a simple plastic tray with the dividers and exhaust manifold, uh, starter, roof cargo basket, that's for a different project, engine mount. So anyways, you just scribble on a piece of paper what it is and you can also use Ziploc bags, but I just find the plastic containers easier to get to. So, all right, now we're gonna do the same thing over here. Out comes the bolt. There's the nut. And the front of the engine is now undone on both sides. Now we'll go and do the, uh, the back engine mounts on the other side. To get these back engine mounts off, I'm using 9 16ths. And for the one on the belt side, you're going to use the same socket, 916, get a short extension. And you access it right behind this. Right behind that uh, carburetor there. Alright, so we're now ready to move the engine from the sled except for the oil line still connected um, way down on the other side back in the lower part so um, yeah let's see if we can kind of get it rocked forward a little bit to take that off and then we'll be ready to come out completely the way those mounts are situated you kind of have to come forward before you go up so we're gonna figure this out. Probably gonna take a lot of wiggling. All right, so we are off the mounts back there. Move the camera so you can see how to take the oil line off. I want to figure out your own way of doing this, but I'll just explain what I did. So you see this block of wood here, and then there's one over there on the other side. I basically tilted the engine forward, got it off the mounting studs in the back. You can tell these mounting uh, spots in the front are well forward of where they originally mounted on. And I still have some things hooked up back here, but the tilt forward basically gives me room to get back here and figure out 
what needs to come off, what's going to stay, and things like that. Notice that the carburetors all came forward and are no longer in the air box. So you just want to be careful that you don't damage them. So um, we'll just leave them in the sled. But yeah, just be gentle that those don't get damaged. I can see the oil line down there. I highly recommend a pair of pliers like this. Super useful for getting in tight spots that are down, buried in something. And when that comes off, you're gonna have oil spilling everywhere as you can hear, so be prepared with a bolt to try to plug it. But as you can see, it's like trying to plug a bleeding artery in NAM. Not the easiest thing to do. She's squirting everywhere, boss. And if yours went as crappy as mine, you just lost all your oil. And the stupid little screw you have don't even fit. At this point I'm just looking for a catch pan. Which I don't have right here. That can fit underneath there. Because we're losing some serious oil. Alright, so as you can see, I got some uh, boards here at 2x6s um, going from this front part of the frame or uh, chassis support. And then that's probably not what it's called, I don't know what it's called. And then back to that part. So, anyways, pretty solid support. Don't want all the weight going on this flimsy plastic or anything like that. But I'm gonna try to rock it forward and then do one lift onto this flimsy board. Could be a disaster. We will see. Making lots of noise helps you lift uh, heavier weight. It's been proven. Totally made that up, but it's fun.